In June of 2012, the planet Venus passed directly between the Earth and the Sun. This event, known as the transit of Venus, occurs twice in an eight-year span, but not again for more than 100 years, making the pair of transits more rare than Halley's Comet, but less rare than two Halley's Comets. It was Edmund Halley himself who suggested that the astronomers of Europe prepare for the transits of the 18th century by observing them from numerous locations. Then, they might pool their data and use it to calculate the distance of the Earth from the Sun. Eager to make a name for himself, a charming young Frenchman by the name of Guillaume Joseph Hyacinth de Jean-Baptiste Le Gentil volunteered for the job. The French Academy of Sciences sent him to observe the transit from the French-controlled region of Pondicherry. With the first transit expected on June 6, 1761, Le Gentil set sail from France in March of 1760. He arrived in July at the Isle de France, just off the coast of Madagascar. Once arrived, he contracted a spectacular bout of dysentery. Once recovered, he secured passage on the Fregat Silphiant. The ship was caught up in a monsoon and traveled, somewhat against the wishes of its crew, to Africa. With only a month left before the transit, the crew of the Silphiant learned that war had broken out between England and France, and Pondicherry was now under British control. To Le Gentil's dismay, the crew opted to return to the Isle de France. The transit occurred while he was at sea. Le Gentil did observe the event, but his measurements, made from the deck of a ship at sea, were useless. He returned to the Isle de France in late June, where he acquired a kind of food poisoning that caused double vision. The next transit was in 1769. Le Gentil was determined not to sail all the way back to France without results. He would divide the next five years between additional scientific pursuits and additional dysentery. Mm -hmm. By 1766, he had decided that Manila would be an ideal point of observation. In May, he wrote to the Academy of Science to inform them of his plan and to ask for diplomatic letters of recommendation. As his message sailed home, he sailed to the Philippines and arrived in August. It was then that Le Gentil enjoyed one of the only pieces of good luck in his journey. He had planned to take a side trip to the Mariana Islands in order to do science. He opted out of the mission, and thus out of passage on a ship to the Marianas that sunk almost immediately. By July of 1767, Le Gentil received word from France confirming that they had received his message some 15 months earlier and that the diplomatic letters were on their way. This he showed to officials in Manila, who concluded that it was impossible for word to reach so rapidly from impossible. France, and accused Le Gentil of forgery. Le Gentil decided that it would probably be cloudy in Manila in 1769 anyway, and maybe he should just go to Pondicherry, which was once again under French control. He chartered passage on two Portuguese ships from Manila. The first was too heavy to sail, and returned to port. Le Gentil considered the second to be among the most pleasant seafaring he'd done, although according to his diaries, Le Gentil would have to pilot the ship himself, after an argument between the captain and helmsman led to the helmsman locking himself in his cabin and refusing to come out. By March 1768, he finally arrived in Pondicherry. In June, he moved into an observatory the local government built to his specifications. By coincidence, the observatory doubled as a gunpowder magazine. In May of the following year, he finally received his letters of recommendation, as requested a mere three years earlier. Le Gentil wrote of Pondicherry, You cannot have any idea of the beautiful skies which these nights offer until you have seen them. During the whole month of May, the mornings were very beautiful. He also wrote, in less than seven or eight minutes, the weather was obstructed, as it were, by the approach of a gust of wind. The great clouds, which until then had been motionless, began to move. The wind died down, but the clouds remained. At three or four minutes before seven o'clock, almost the moment when Venus was to go off the sun, nothing could be distinguished in the telescope. He would learn later that Manila enjoyed lovely weather the morning of the transit. Le Gentil planned to return to France on the ship Virvault in October of 1769. In September, he found himself with a chronic fever and unfit for travel. In December, more dysentery. In March of 1770, 
Le Gentil traveled back to the Isle de France. Too sick to continue the journey home, he decided to wait until May for the ship Indian. Indian arrived in July, and by November set sail for France. Two weeks later, it was wrecked in a hurricane and limped back to the Isle de France with Le Gentil, but without his luggage or instruments. The next French ship to travel through the Isle de France refused to take Le Gentil aboard, so he traveled instead to Spain aboard a Spanish warship and at long last returned home in October of 1771. His voyage lasted 11 years, 6 months, and 13 days, and remains the longest voyage in the history of astronomy. Perhaps the manned exploration of other planets will one day take longer. Le Gentil's family was surprised to see his return, and he was surprised to find that they had declared him dead and split up his property. With his journey completed, Guillaume Le Gentil was free to pursue the legal process of being declared not dead, an ordeal that required no less than the intervention of the King of France. He was eventually readmitted to the Academy of Sciences, which reprimanded and demoted him for not returning with the measurements he'd been assigned. All this in the name of science. Today, there's a small crater on the moon named for Le Gentil. The next transit of Venus is predicted to be in December 2117. Thank you.